everyone, welcome. My name's Eugene, HoustonMotorizedBicycles.com. Today I'm going to show you what's everything that's included in the four-stroke 4G T-belt transmission motorized bicycle kit here. Um, it comes basically two boxes inside of one box. I don't think you need to watch me uh, remove it uh, from, from the big box here, but here, here's our two major boxes here. One which has the engine in it. Here you've got the four-stroke motor. You've got the muffler, which is mounted here on the front. On some applications, you may want to go ahead and remove the muffler if you don't like the looks of it. Or if you want to go ahead and keep it, leave it on. You've got your carburetor. Uh, you're going to be mounting your throttle cable here from the back. This is your choke lever here. Your gas inlet here is here on your carburetor. This is a vent tube. You're going to go ahead and let it ultimately uh, just go ahead and hang down. Here is your oil filler cap here, the black cap, uh, the black plug here that screws out. And then you've got your drain plug here where you remove this uh, bolt here and you can drain the oil. This is the clutch here on the motor. Your transmission is going to mount on the side here and go back. You've got your instructions. You've got a spark plug tool. And that's the contents of your first box. We've got our instructions. You've got the shroud for your belt. You have your throttle assembly, additional grip. You've got your fuel pet cock and fuel hose. You have your idler arm, your, your uh, your chain tensioner which is going to bolt on the chain stay that's the the bottom tube that goes from the pedal back to the axle that's holding the wheel on this bolts onto your chain stay here and this here is what keeps tension on your chain you've got the as they call it the T-belt transmission here here's your your reduction pulley here this is your clutch bell housing. Here's your output shaft where your chain is going to go back to your rear tire. When you mount your engine, you've got some concerns that you need to have your, your output sprocket here lined up directly with the sprocket on the rear wheel. If you don't have them lined up straight, you're going to have problems with your chain. So you want to make sure that your mounting system, however you're going to mount it, if you're going to use the mount that's with the kit or if you're going to fabricate one but you've got to make sure that you've got your alignment correct between your output sprocket and your rear wheel sprocket here is your quote unquote universal mounting plate you've got a, a bit of adjustment here as well adjustment here where you can move the motor right to left and this here will expand it's very important that this matches the geometry of your frame. If your, your, your frame is where, where your seat tube comes down and then your down tube comes down, if it doesn't match, if it doesn't match what you've got here, you're going to have to do some fabrication. We've got our fuel tank. You want to make sure that the studs are uh, the mounting studs that come off of the tank here don't get bent. Sometimes that happens in transit. Looks like we got a pretty good clean tank. You've got your outlet here where your your fuel pet cock is going to screw into. We have the rag joint kit which we're going to use to mount the sprocket to the rear wheel. This being the uh, the four stroke kit it comes with a pretty beefy chain so we've got our, our drive chain here we've got our crank kit because we need extra wide uh, cranks the pedals on the bike in order to clear the motor so you've got a wide crank kit you've got the shaft you've got the bearings you've got the bearing cups and the adapters here they give you a new sprocket for your, your pedal for your crank 
you've got the arms, you've got the uh, little plastic uh, caps that go onto the, the pedal arm, the nuts can come off. If you don't get them real tight, I've had an issue with uh, one bike on that. So you want to make sure that you get your nuts on the, the shaft, on your pedal crank here, good and tight. And pop the cap in in case the nut comes off or whatever, so you're not going to be losing it. We've got some miscellaneous hardware here. Some different adapters. You have your belt tightening tool which fits your transmission in case you need to tighten it up here. It's a special tool. You want to hang on to that. So how you install it, a lot of it has to depend upon what bike you're going to choose. I hope you found this informative. Watch on. I've got to, I'm going to show you how to install this kit on a bike from start to finish. Okay, here we go. This is our bike that we're going to be mounting our four-stroke kit on. This is a McCargy Stealth. It's a very good, very stout bike. You've got good metal in it, good fittings. Of course, you want to go through and grease your, your steering tube bearings. We're going to be replacing the crank bearing here on the pedal, so we don't really have an issue there. You want to double-check your wheel bearings. Make sure they've got plenty of grease. Make sure they're adjusted properly, and of course, you want to make sure that your wheels are true that you don't have a lot of run out in your wheels you're going to have issues there. I've got the standard mounting plate on it. It mounts onto the frame and if we do a test fit on the motor we've got a clearance issue here. Uh, the carburetor will be striking the frame so we've got uh, a, we've got a problem. Uh, part of the problem is the mounting plate here is having to rest on top of the chain guard. It really needs to go down about another inch, inch and a half, but that's going to interfere with the chain guard and your pedal crank. So what I'm going to do on this installation here is I'm going to get rid of the mounting plate that comes with it and I'm going to be brazing some angle iron here to mount the motor. When you mount your motor you want to make sure that your mounting plate However you mount it, if you use the kit plate or you, you weld on some metal onto it for your, your engine mount, you want to make sure that it's level. That if you have it cocked one way or the other, you're going to have some issues with your carburetor float adjustment. Uh, you may have some performance issues. So you want to take some time here to get it right and make sure that your mounting system is, is fairly level. And then of course you have to mount your motor to where the output from your transmission mates up with your sprocket on your rear end. First thing we're going to do is we're going to replace the crank and pedal assembly. Then we're going to put our sprocket on the rear wheel. Then I'll be ready to go ahead and start fabricating my mounting plate here, my mounting system that I'm going to use and I need to make sure that I have my motor aligned to where the output from the transmission is in a straight line with the sprocket on the rear wheel. I know that I'm going to have to cut the rear fender so the chain doesn't rub against it. You've got the fatter tires on these bikes here with the 2.125 tire. Uh, you, you've got the tire coming out beyond the, the rim so you will have some chain rub issues if you don't get your alignment just right. Okay, I've got the bike up on a stand here. That way I can rotate the wheels freely. What we want to do is we want to check and make sure that our wheel doesn't have any run out on it. This bike here is in pretty good shape. What I'm going, what you do is you want to set your, either your finger on the frame and get it real close to your rim. Go ahead and rotate the tire. A full revolution. or go ahead and get it cranked up, get it rolling, put your finger close to it and check for run out. This particular bike here has very minimal run out. You don't want any more than about an eighth of an inch maximum run out on it, maybe even a sixteenth of an inch. If it is warped somewhat, if the tire is warped out this way here, meaning it, it, it's, it, it, it's too far this way here, 
what you're going to have to do is get the spoke that's on the opposite side and tighten it up in order to move the wheel in that direction here. There, there are videos on YouTube to on truing your wheels, but you want to make sure that your wheels are in pretty good shape. I've checked the front wheel. The front wheel's in good shape too, because if you're going to be doing like 30 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour, you want to make sure that your wheels are true. You want to make sure that all of your hardware is in good shape. Your fender mount is in good shape because you don't want your fender coming loose. Let's go ahead and proceed. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the rear wheel. We're going to have to loosen our axle nuts. You're going to have to loosen up your brake arm here. It has a clamp here on your chain stay. This is the chain stay member here. This is what is called the seat stay. You have your, your seat post here, the tube here for your seat. Let's go ahead and get our tools. We're going to need a Phillips and you're going to need a crescent wrench or a small uh, small uh, open a box end wrench here to uh, loosen up the brake arm and you're going to need a crescent wrench or a box wrench here to remove your axle nuts. Let's go ahead and get the rear wheel off. Then we're going to remove our pedal crank here because we're going to put our pedal crank kit on it and then we're going to start sizing it up for our motor for our proper fit. At this point here, you can go ahead and remove your chain from your rear sprocket. Take your rear wheel out. We're going to mount the sprocket onto the rear wheel, but right now we're going to focus on the, uh, the, the pedal assembly. We've got to get the chain guard off. While I'm at it, I'm going to go just go ahead and remove the fender here. Okay, our chain guard is held on by a screw here, a tab that mounts to the chain stay in the back. And then there's a screw. You may have to move your pedal and your, your uh, sprocket in order to see it. You've got a screw right here that's got to come out and then your chain guard comes off. Then we're going to go ahead and pull our, uh, our crank assembly. With your hardware on your bicycle and as well the hardware in the kit, uh, the hardware isn't as robust as it used to be. Some of the uh, fasteners are, are rather cheap, so you want to make sure that you use the right screwdriver. You've got a good tight fit, particularly on your Phillips screwdrivers. Otherwise, you will uh, strip the head of the screw. Okay, we've got the chain guard off. Okay, in order to remove your, your pedal crank here, first thing you're going to have to do is loosen your, your, your foot pedal here. On the left hand side of the bike, it's reverse thread, so it's not righty tighty, lefty loosey. It's righty loosey, lefty tighty. So I'm going to take a 916 wrench, which fits that, and I'm going to turn it clockwise which in theory should tighten it but it loosens it up on this side here. Go ahead and remove the foot pedal. We've got a large nut here. This nut as well it's threaded in reverse.
You then have a washer that has a key on it. Go ahead and remove that washer. Pull that off. You then have this large nut here, which is threaded the same way. You can take a large screwdriver. Give it a tap, and I'm turning it clockwise to loosen it. Remove the nut. Go ahead and carefully remove your bearing. And then your pedal assembly, your crank assembly, is ready to come off. Slowly manipulate it out. Now we're going to need to remove the bearing cup on both sides of it because we're going to have new bearing cups to install. You're going to need to get you a hammer and a, uh, a punch and punch these out. And what we want to do is get the punch on the inside of the, the bracket here and we'll give it some love taps. Work it out nice and slow. You want to work your punch around. You don't want to just work it all in one area. Tap it a little bit on one side, then come up the opposite side and tap it, and then work it again on a, a, a perpendicular angle. Uh, what I'm going to do is strike it at 6 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and then 3 o'clock. You want to be careful not to gall up the inside of your bearing cup. If you do, strike it with your punch. You want to go back with a file and file it smooth. Be sure and get any shavings out. Alright, we're ready to go on to our next step.